Today's lesson in our Sunday School uh, booklet for May 15, 2016. Unit 3, Fullness of Faith. And the other title is Valuing Humility. Our devotional reading is Micah 6, 6 through 8. 7, chapter 18, 19. The background scripture is from Luke 18, excuse me, 9, 14. And our print passage is Luke 18, 9 through 14. Our key verse is the, rep- the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his own eyes unto heaven, but smote his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. NIV. The tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven. But beat his breast and said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our lesson aims for this morning is, number one, as a result of experiencing this lesson, the student should be able to do these things. Know what the Pharisee said was so wrong and what the tax collector said it was so right. Number two, appreciate the difference between self-righteous at platitudes and true gratitude for God's mercy and grace. Aim number three, inspect and if necessary correct the participant's motivation for his or her piety. Our introduction to this lesson is, this is an example. Sitting among older pastors has proved to be a more beneficial for this writer. I have learned so much by listening to them talk about their many challenges and how they resolve problems from a practical perspective. It was during one of those settings when one of them bragged about all that he had not done during his Christian pilgrimage. Therefore, he had a good name throughout the community. His bragging continued as he criticized us when we acknowledged that we were sinners. He exclaimed, I'm not a sinner because I don't fornicate or commit adultery, for I am pure. You cannot find anybody to say anything about me. I have never been accused of immorality of any kind, for I am a good man. Then another of the pastors who were fellowshipping with us, this is in parenthesis, who was the same age as the holier than thou, Pharisaic preacher, rose from his seat and with a contrite voice uttered, Brother Pastor, with the good at reputation, I wish I had your clean record, as you have shared today. My name has been drugged through the mud. I have been accused of all kinds of wrongdoings. While I was, I confess that I have sinned and come short of the glory of God in so many ways, yet, in spite of it all, I am happy to say that our God has been just as kind to me as he has been to you. Just look closely at our two ministries. He is still blessing me because I do not depend on my righteousness. I depend on his grace and his renewed mercy. Freshly renewed each and every day. I know I ain't as good as you, but he still loves me anyway. 
The hearty prayer of the Pharisees will be found in Luke 18, 9 and 12. For the NIV, NIV listeners, And he spoke this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, and the other. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. And he says, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, which are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this publican. Verse 12. For I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. The NIV version is, 9, starting, to some who were confidants of their own righteousness, and they looked down on everybody else. Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector, the publican. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all that I get. In an effort to have the disciples understand the necessity for prayer, Jesus begins chapter 18 with two parables. The first was about a persistent Widow, Luke 18, 1, 8. That is the parable about where she came before the judge, and the judge finally gave in because she wearied him, rather than have her to keep coming before him asking for the same thing. The Pharisee stood up and prayed, about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, robbers, evildoers, and adulterers, or even like this tax collector. In an effort to have the disciples understand the necessity for prayer, Jesus began chapter 18 with two parables. The first was about a persistent widow, and the second was concerned the Pharisee and the Republican and the Republicans. Today's lesson focuses on the Pharisee and the Publican. The Pharisees were self-righteous leaders of the temple. Jesus directed this parable to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else. This was undoubtedly a reference to the Pharisee. Jesus used the attitude of the Pharisees as the example that the disciples and other who believe in Jesus were to avoid because of the Pharisees' self-righteous attitude. A self-righteous person is critical, condemning, smugly biased on the opinion of others. These recalcitrant sinners are overconfident in themselves. Recalcitrant is to deny and will look down their noses on others. The second, the recalcitrant sinners are overconfident in themselves and will look down their noses on others. The second character in the parable was a tax collector or a publican. These two men, a Pharisee and a tax collector, went up to the temple to pray. We see an attitude of self-righteous, egocentric sham spiritually on display. The Pharisee stood by himself and in essence prayed to himself. He enumerated how good he was and the good things he did. He went on to compare himself to the tax collector and disparage the tax collector. He climaxed his prayer with self-righteous acknowledgement 
that he fasted twice a week, and he gave a tenth of all that he got. In his eyesight and an estimation, excuse me, he was the epitome of perfection and righteousness. What do you think? Do you know people like the Pharisees? Yes, we do. How do you minister to a person with such an attitude? It's not easy. Can a person with a Pharisaic attitude be effective soul winner? Hardly. Explain. The publican standing afar off would not lift so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote his breath, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Pumpkins or tax collectors were a despised group in Jewish life. They were hated and considered traitors because they considered themselves as being oppressed by their oppressor, the Roman government. Tax collectors would pay the excess taxes that the government set. Then, listen closely, they would collect from the people plus additional fees for profit. They're filling their own pockets or purse. This kind of business dealings made them prosperous on the backs of their native countrymen. Consequently, they were severely disliked by the Jews. In this parable, the tax collector was fully aware of his sinfulness and spiritual plight. Therefore, he did not stand boasting. He took begging for mercy from a merciful God, and the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his own eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breath, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Self-righteousness is dangerous. It leads to a state of pride. We will remember one situation where, in the heavenly abode, pride was the cause of one Lucifer to be expelled from heaven because of his pride. He had become puffed up, and Ezekiel tells us that he said, in the five I wills, I would descend, I would ascend to the throne where God sits. That is other ridiculous. We understand that to mean that he had to leave his abode, for he had left his second estate. Hence the tax collector prayer should be our prayer, because we all have sinned or in dire need of God's grace and mercy. We should never allow the pride of academic or economic achievement to short-circuit our relationship from our life source. It doesn't matter how many degrees you got hanging off you. Still, if you're not humble in that endeavor, the prayers will not go as high as the ceiling. What do you think? It is clear that the two men mentioned in today's lesson represent two categories. Each of us should ask, which characters do I, character do I best identify with? Do I stand like the Pharisee, trying to make a case for myself, or do I possess the characteristics of the publican, no acknowledging that I am a sinner and that my only hope is in the grace of God through Jesus Christ. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, that is to be brought low, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. This is verse 14 from the King James Version. And for those of you who are reading the NIV, 
I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. This parable is summarized with the verdict of the Lord. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. In other words, the tax collector, rather than the proud Pharisee, was right with God. The writer of this gospel of Luke set forth the parable to challenge the thinking of those individuals who think they are self-assured of their righteousness and look down on everybody else. The word righteousness comes from the Greek word that is translated justified. So the parable is presented as a lesson on justification, a legal term meaning God has dropped the charges on us. Case dismissed. Justification also suggests it's just as we have not done it. That is the sin and iniquities. Conclusively, the way to justification is expressed and summed up in the words at the end of the parable. And it says, For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and that he is humble himself shall be exalted. To be sure, God's mercy and love are available to all. Our self-righteousness is not a prerequisite. Justification is available to the humble and to the least and to the lost and the last, the lonely and the left out when we confess that we are sinners and we ask Almighty God for forgiveness. What do you think? The publican, in contrast to the Pharisee, showed humility. When we are on our knees in a humble position before God, our Father, that shows humility. And we are to be in a state of humility like our Savior. A closing thought. We learn from the verdict pronounced on the two worshipers that it is necessary in order to please God to be sincere and to be humble. However, we must never infer that we are saved by our sincerity or by our humility. We are not saved by those virtues any more than boasting of our goodness, but by the free grace of God. Your life, as these two men demonstrated differences in demeanor and deportment, there are some things in both that can be avoided, and some things in both can be copied. We should avoid a Pharisee's pride, but not neglect his performance. We should forsake the publican's sins and retain his humility. Your world. A simple definition of the word justified means accepted by God as righteous. The Pharisee had, in turn, given God the credit for his moral excellence. But the arrogance with which he set forth his qualities shows that he was motivated by pride. His prayer contained no requests, and he drew no blessing. But the publican's re request, wrapped up in humility, was granted. Our closing prayer is this. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the amazing way you have demonstrated and continue to demonstrate your loving kindness and mercy towards us. Thank you, Father God, that you can that you 
thank you that we can come humbly and submissively to your throne of grace. And that we will find grace and mercy in the time of need. Thank you again for looking beyond our faults and seeing our need. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.